Good afternoon, class. Today, what we're gonna work on is applying a vine charcoal base coat to our Bristol vellum paper. Uh, we are gonna do the drawing in vine charcoal. Uh, once we've finished and established the block in, then we are going to use our erasers to divide the light and shadows. So I'm gonna go ahead and get set up on a table um, in order to apply the vine charcoal um, and create the base coat. Let's get started. Okay class, so I put my drawing on a table, a flat surface, in order to uh, maximize um, this process and uh, reduce uh, the amount of mess everywhere. So I've got my sanding blocks, I've got my vine charcoal, and I'm going to basically just allow the shavings to become the base coat. My goal is to have it become a value number, let's say two or three or so. Now, depending on the, the paper, the Bristol vellum paper, for some reason, some Bristol vellum papers seem to be um, a little bit more versatile than others. So I'm going to bomb all of this together. And then once I have that, I will go ahead and start drawing. You can see that I'm putting quite a bit of the vine residue onto the paper. It doesn't necessarily have to be even. The thing that you want to avoid is making it too dark because we're gonna use vine charcoal in order to draw. And if it is too dark, what's gonna happen is you won't see your drawing. Okay, so I've got my base coat in there. I'm taking a paper towel and I'm gonna slowly, lightly go ahead in a circular motion. I don't necessarily want to push it into the paper. I'm just gliding this over in order to create the tone. Because at the end of the day, I'm gonna to wanna to use my eraser in order to uh, pull up some of the lights. So if I push the paper, the cloth into, I may actually end up um, forcing it into the paper and not giving myself the ability to pull up the actual drawing. So now just to, to sample it, I can still pull out some lights. So you can see here and then also, so I can get pretty light. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and sharpen my um, vine charcoal. So I'm using the Nitram, the square um, charcoal because <clears throat> it's got more density, so it's less likely to break. Got my trash can underneath. I've already sharpened two of them, so I'm gonna sharpen the third one. So basically, at an angle, I don't know which way would be best, something like so, which is probably like 30 something degrees or so, I'm gonna start going back and forth to shave down an edge and create almost like a sword-like um, effect. So you can see that the one side is getting shaved down. And it's a little bit wider towards the back than the front. And you wanna end up with something more or less like this. So I've sharpened three of them. I have this uh, foam sand blocks, extra fine um, sandpaper and then I put it in a little Tupperware. When I'm done, I just close it up because it can get pretty dirty. You should have at least three of these. Um, that way you're not wasting time sharpening um, while you're drawing. So I'm gonna use the sight size method. I'm gonna start off doing the sight size method and then um, we're gonna transition into actually pulling up the lights because I think you guys have seen quite a bit of the um, 
sight size and cross triangulation. So it's no need to go through an entire video doing that. Very good, let's get started. We're gonna start the sight size. Hopefully that it's gonna be okay to see. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing that I've always done. In this case, my drawing is gonna be really close to the top, which is not ideal. So make sure that you think about that before you go. And I've made, um, what I've done is I taped off my piece of paper um, in order to give me a nice white kind of border but it actually is cutting into the drawing just a little bit. It's a demo, so I'm not gonna worry so much about it, but with your drawing, make sure that you give yourself room. And this photocopy is pretty large, so just be aware. It fits on the top. On the bottom, it's, it's gonna cut out a toenail maybe. Okay, so I have my top. In this case, the legs look like they're pretty even as far as, um, the weight of them. So I'm going to pick the left side because I have more negative space climbing all the way up the body. Um, and I think it's maybe nicer to do that. I have to keep in mind that there is a bent arm. So I wanna make sure that I don't have this running off the page, the elbow. So I'm going to make sure that I bring it in enough. So more or less, somewhere around here will be the elbow. And I'm using cross triangulation right now. So I'm triangulating from the ankle to the elbow. And it's saying more or less it's gonna be here. And then on the other side, I want to make a measurement. So to make sure, I'm gonna actually use this. So more or less, I need this much, so that's fine. Okay, very good. So now that I have my, you know, this could be considered the basic envelope. If we want to get the widest point of the knuckle, which is more or less somewhere around here. And if I triangulate that, from the ankle that I have. It's telling me more or less that the widest point is gonna be somewhere around here. If I measure that from elbow to knuckle, just, it gives me a good, it's more or less correct. I'm sure it's gonna change just a little bit because I did that pretty fast, but I have my height to width relationship. Okay, very good. So I wanna make sure that I started off, starting off with the ankle, always with the ankle because it's the least affected by gravity. In this case here, we're not necessarily, um, the model isn't gonna move, so we don't have that issue, but we just wanna set up where we're just being consistent. So when we do have a live model that we're not uh, taking steps backwards. All right, so I've got my height wherever they intersect. Okay, it's here. And then remember, you're always going to, once you have two coordinates, you're going to connect those. And you can see that it's not perfect. I don't necessarily want to use my eraser to clean it up. I'm going to use my brush because I don't want to pull up the, uh, the charcoal. So, and you can also see the couple of little spots that I've touched the paper, um, my fingerprints are being left behind. So be careful. Okay, like so. Good, and then the angle. gonna check that angle again. Okay, that looks good. And then pretty much from there, actually the knee, a slightly different angle. So it's exactly the same process. Make sure you don't put pressure on the charcoal. I'm putting a little bit of pressure just so you guys can see it. Hopefully you guys can see it. 
Welcome back class. I've done the side size block in drawing. Um, I've tried to make it as clean as possible. You can see there are a few handprints and things over it. Um, I did try to clean up as I went um, and try to keep the lines as neutral as possible. So just cleaning up, making sure that the line weight is not heavy. Um, so I can go in and start blocking out the um, light pattern. So I've done the best that I can at this stage. Uh, what I'm going to do now is take my kneaded eraser. So I've mapped out the shadow patterns. Instead of putting the base coat for the shadow pattern, what I'm going to do is take my kneaded eraser and actually pull out the lights. Okay, so I've done the basic uh, block in between 
the the of the figure. Then I divided divided light and shadow, and then I used my kneaded eraser to start pulling out the lights. So now that I've done that, I'm going to switch into a charcoal pencil. And if you have your um, your pencil, the pastel pencil, I would also take that out because you're going to need to use that. The pastel pencil, what it does is allows you to bond the the base coat. So, and what I mean by that is that the charcoal pencil basically it it's a little bit harder to pull up that value, but you can still pull up that value. And what we want at a certain point is to commit to the value that we're putting down. So I don't want to keep doing the same thing over and over again. So um, that pastel pencil will allow me to go ahead and, and put something down and not when I put the fan brush over it, it's not gonna eliminate it. So I lost a little bit of the drawing here, so I'm just cleaning it up. And the great thing about charcoal is that it it's a mysterious, it can be mysterious. So, you know, working to the benefits of this medium is allowing some things just to fall into shadow and not worry about making it perfect. And the hand is a perfect place for that, where I just let things kind of be what they are. So I'm just going back and, and I'm kind of refining now because after I used a fan brush, some of this stuff got a little blurry. And of course my base coat of the shadow is the base coat of the paper that I initially put down. So I would just want to darken that down. Now one of the things that we want to be aware of is why would you use this technique? So one of the main things is that if we look at the background, there's a lot of dark in the background. So instead of filling in the paper with a pencil, you just start off with a base coat. And it saves you a lot of time and energy. So that being said, you're going to want to address the, uh, the background sooner than later. So I'm going to start developing. You can see in the photocopy that the background, you know, we were working on it. And I'm constantly always looking to refine my drawing.
Which is what really happens with hair. Hair is, is not, doesn't have such hard edge. Because this is in shadow over here, I'm gonna go ahead and just use my kneaded eraser just to lighten the edge of that line up just a little bit, the background. And then kind of fade it. And then come back in with my fan brush. And again, just start blending those edges. You can see it blends pretty well, pretty easily. So it doesn't look abnormal. Now, because I did that, I also lost a little bit of the drawing. So I'm gonna come back in, clean up the drawing now, and also the shadow pattern. All right, class, so I've done my base coat. I've gone back over the entire figure with uh, charcoal pencil, you can see here. Um, I've also taken my kneaded eraser and I started lightening up certain areas because I see that it is a little bit lighter. I have to be careful not to lose the drawing. Anytime that I have, feel like the drawing has been compromised, I'm gonna go back in and fix it. Don't wait till the end. You know, anything that you see that needs correcting, do it as you discover it. Okay. So now on your materials list, I have put to buy a Pit Pastel number 1122-181. So the reason for this is that this pencil here um, is gonna bond to the paper and not pull up as much as the charcoal uh, pencil. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this throughout the shadow pattern. Okay, class, so I've built up a little bit of the drawing at this point, and I want to now address a few things. So need to just kind of refine a few things, make sure the drawing isn't getting lost, et cetera, et cetera. So the great thing about the uh, toning your paper is that you can kind of accentuate and then um, not back. So one, the background needs to be uh, adjusted. Two, the hair has a little bit of texture. So if Rembrandtian um, style is that wherever there's light, there's a little bit of a darker background, which makes the light seem 
that much brighter. So along the edge here, and again, you want to do it, you know, delicately, so you're blending into the base coat that you already have existing. But you can see, just by doing that, that makes that shoulder that much brighter. So, you know, again, there's a dark right in here. So we're gonna start off with the arm being a little bit darker. And then blend, 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 blend. This is a 4B, I should probably go into a 2B. just to keep refining the draw. So little by little, we're gonna get closer and closer. Now with the hair, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take the ball like this and I'm gonna kind of drag it and roll it around. Now you have to be careful not to go really crazy on this, like so. Gonna soften this up just a little bit here. Actually, I can soften it. And then I can come back in and accentuate. Now she has curly hair, so you know you want to make sure that you're not losing that reality. And you may have to do that several times to get the effect. Okay, so we also have some reflective light in here. So initially what I would do is I'd take my kneaded eraser and you can see right in here, there's a little bit more light. And it's coming up in here and then kind of fading. Something like so. Let's bond that layer together because it cannot be as bright as what's happening in the mid-tones. Soften it up. on the pencil and I'm going in the same direction and I'm thinking about that whole concept that we did with the sphere so and also the value scale going in the same direction filling in the gaps to make it a uh, 
a value without texture. So the same left, right, top, bottom. And squint your eyes, squint, squint, squint. So what I just did there, so it's getting a little bit bright down here. So I'm just gonna put an even this hand here. Very delicate wash. 